whatever I have taught in the class about acquisition, I want to repeat it so that you can understand by seeing this video many times. I'll start from very basic. Since the time of inception, blocks has been given on auction by the government upstream arm that is DGH. Now these blocks which is a piece of land or maybe in the shallow water or in the offshore may have some data, may not have any data which is relevant for resource estimation, production and also development of the appraisal and the development of this block. There is a difference between block and field. Block is at the exploration stage whereas field is that part of the land where we have proved commercial hydrocarbon presence and we have produced. We have an FDP plan and we know that FDP will be monetized and at the end, we can go into the abandonment phase. This block, under two regime, that is the NELP and the HELP, are auctioned based on certain information which is available in the docket provided by TGH. Based on the data which is there in the docket, you can have your own opinion about the resource potential in these blocks, the prospects which are present in the block or you can do a speculative survey to add on to whatever data is available. Depending on the basin, whether it is a category 1 basin, category 2 basin, category 3 basin or category 4 basin, the data may be sparse, data may be quite good enough to have new opinion about the block or additional data may be required. So if you are going to the Himalayan Kutil or the Bindians or the Ganga Valley, you may require some more data before taking a call for bidding in this block. Once you have put a bid, you put a bid for your technical understanding of the block and the work program, some of the work program are mandatory work program which you have to do and some of the work program is bidable work program. Based on the technical bid and the financial bid, you win the block and after that you get a license to explore the block. Now when you get a license for 7 years, you do exploration for 7 years, you don't monetize the hydrocarbon even if you discover it. So, maybe in this block, some seismic data is already available as 2D or 3D. Some gravity data may be available here. And some geochemical analysis may have been done in this block, which is already existing data. Now, you have to augment this data as soon as you win the block you have already committed by that time some mandatory work program in terms of geochemical analysis, gravity magnetic, 2D seismic, 3D seismic and also based on your understanding of the block, you have bidded that you will be doing this many line kilometer of seismic, this many square kilometer of seismic and drilling of exploratory wells. Now, when you have this block and you have paid, given a commitment for work program, the important thing which is to understand the block is to conduct seismic. If the subsurface prospects are known, then you can do a close grid 2D or a 3D over the prospect to understand the detailed architecture of the prospect and bring out some new prospect. If you have no idea on that, so actually go for a 2D seismic data, understand the large scale prospects and then go for a 3D to develop it further. In order to do a seismic acquisition, we require to understand that how the seismic lines 
should be planned and what should be the geometry of the seismic acquisition. Now if this is the block once again I draw it and I want to actually do a 2D seismic because I know this is the trend in which the leaves or the leaves or prospects are and you have some rudimentary idea about the same you will be doing some 2D seismic first because the subsurface prospect probably is known to you and the confidence level may vary you may have a confidence level in understanding it as a play or a lead or a prospect so if it is in a lead or a semi prospect stage you will be doing first the 2D seismic now when you do the 2D seismic you should know the deep and strike of the block you should know which side is the knot and based on the deep and strike you will be orienting your lines. Based on the subsurface prospect orientation, you will be actually orienting your line. In this case, we are seeing that there are certain lines, three lines, which are northwest, southeast, and then there are certain lines which are northeast, southwest, and they are orthogonal to each other. Now, the second question is that how many geophones are required and how many sources we require that is the source points and what type of instrument we require to analyze the data when we talk about source in the land we are talking about geophone and sorry we are talking about dynamite or hydrosis as a source whereas the recorders are the geophones so this information is very much important to understand the subsurface fold because fold is given as half into number of geophones group interval which is the distance between two geophones by short interval that gives you that how many times the subsurface point will be illuminated. So this information is first required to plan your seismic. Once the planning is done, you have done your refraction seismic survey and you have understood that what is the depth to the short hole and this depth of the short hole is utilized for the reflection survey because your short hole depth should be more than the low velocity zone which you have found from the refraction and you also have done an optimization between the short hole depth and the charge size and based on that you have taken a value for the short hole depth and also what kg of charge you will be using is it 1 kg, 5 kg, 6 kg or 3 kg now we will talk about little bit about the type of geometry we will be utilizing 